Hello and welcome to another Heartland video. My name is Rob Workman. I'm one of the instructors here at Heartland and today we're going to be doing a video on tracks. Now out here in the woods there are a lot of different animal tracks that are left behind when the animals are going to seek things like food, water, or shelter. Now if you're very very careful you can find some of these tracks and be able to get an idea of what sort of animals pass through this way. Now a quick primer on tracks. When we say tracking Technically, tracks are actually everything that the animal leaves behind, not just the footprint. So a lot of the times though, when people say tracks, they mean the footprints. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to look at some of those footprints and then we're going to see if, what we can find. Uh, now, out here in Heartland, we have a lot of different wildlife, everything from mammals to reptiles, uh, you name it, and they all leave prints and tracks behind. Uh, today, though, we're going to focus on a couple of the mammals that maybe came through here. Uh, now, if you look behind me, you can see that there's a stream. Actually, you can see there's a bridge behind me that goes over the stream. Because of that, a lot of animals go through this area using both the trail that we're on and the stream bed as a pathway to get, mostly in this area, to their food sources. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see what we can find. So down over here, we're going to look at the ground, uh, just down here to the left. Now right here you can see there's a uh, print, and this print almost looks like a broken heart. Uh, so you got the point down here, and then you got like the two lobes of the heart right there. This is actually a white-tailed deer print. We have a lot of white-tailed deer. They like to go after all sorts of different things in the area. Uh, there's different types of berries, different types of grains, uh, even bark from certain types of trees that they'll eat. And they travel along this way to get to their food sources at night. And then they travel back along this way to get to their bedding sources in the morning. Uh, so they are an uh, animal that we see frequently in here. One of the really cool things about these tracks, this is a little bit of an older track so you can't see quite that well, but there's actually two prints here, not just one, because deer do a thing called direct register, which means they lay down their front foot and then their back foot goes right into the same spot. So when you look at one of their tracks, you're actually seeing two tracks superimposed on each other. Uh, cats do this, deer do this, dog do it to a point, uh, but then when you have wild dogs like wolves and coyotes, they will especially do this as well. This helps them be more efficient in their movements, but it also helps with the predators and being able to be more silent as they go through the woods because they know where their front paw went and their back paw automatically goes there so they can stay as quiet as possible. Let's take a look at another track over here. So if we turn over to the side, you'll see another track right here. In fact, there's quite a few of them, but this one shows up in particular. It almost looks like a human foot, or rather a human hand, that's been pressed into the ground. Because uh, you can see the different fingers there, and almost like a thumb. That right there is a raccoon track. Uh, and the raccoons especially love this area. They're going for something different. You see, they like all sorts of different food sources, but they especially like things like old garbage and stuff like that. Uh, now, that's not what they're naturally supposed to go after, but as they've interacted with humans, that's one of the things they get attracted to. We have a lot of stuff in our trash that they think tastes delicious. And in fact, these tracks are likely from a raccoon returning from where one of our uh, dumps, well, one of our areas are that we store trash before it gets sent away. Uh, and they like to go visit that area to see what sorts of things they can eat. Uh, they leave all sorts of fun tracks uh, because they're very, very good with their hands. Uh, in fact, one of the Native American names for raccoon is actually five-fingered one or hand one uh, because it has a hand that looks very similar to a human when it's pressed in the mud. Uh, so that's another critter we see a lot of tracks from. Some other ones we've seen on this path in particular, we've seen coyote tracks. Uh, we've also seen possum tracks. Uh, we've even seen some mink tracks as well. So there's a lot of different animals that frequent this place. So you might be telling yourself, well, what do I do? Uh, how can I use this? You know, I live in a neighborhood, or I live in the city, or you know, maybe, maybe something along those lines. Well, there are still ways that you can see tracks in your uh, area, no matter where you live, because mammals show up everywhere. In fact, a lot of the animals we think of as being in the woods, you'll see them in the city just as much, uh, because they like those areas as well. Things like raccoons, you can find raccoons all around the city. Uh, you can find them in neighborhoods too. Coyotes have even showed up right in the middle of neighborhoods. People have got pictures of them out back, uh, hanging out in their backyard. Now, obviously, you don't want to attract these animals to your house because that could be dangerous. However, you could still try to see if you can find their tracks as they go through your area on their way to food, water, and shelter. Uh, so in the city or in a neighborhood, some of those things might be like your neighbor's garden or maybe some plants that are nearby. Those are places that oftentimes will attract herbivores. Uh, omnivores like raccoons and uh, possums, they really like trash as we are 
already said. Uh, so if you look around uh, your trash area in your uh, yard where you store your trash cans before the trash man takes it out, you might find that there's some prints there as well. If you're really lucky, if you look around through some of the areas of your yard that are maybe kind of hidden by bushes and whatnot, you might even find things like mink or fox or coyote as they're going through looking for the rodents and whatnot that live in the backyards just like they live out here. Uh, so look around and see if you can find some tracks in your neighborhood. If you don't have an area that maybe the tracks will show up on, you can do a couple things. You can either do the old fashioned uh, way of making a little bit of mud or if you've got a little bit of sand, maybe from an old sandbox, or maybe if your dad has some in a bag, uh, laying a little bit on the ground nearby the trash area will be enough to pick up any tracks that come through that place. So lay down that area or pick an area that's nice and muddy already, come back the next day and see what sorts of animals you can find. Because you never know what you can find until you get out there. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.